look at the demographics of traumatic central nervous system injury, a little bit about different ways to classify traumatic brain injury, and of course, for the most part, we'll be looking at an imaging approach uh, in understanding the injury patterns. We'll uh, end up with a short discussion on the use of non-contrast CT and patterns of fractures, which are particularly predictive of vascular injury so that we can help uh, triage those patients appropriately. Now, I have no relevant uh, disclosures uh, to, uh, to uh, point out at this point. Now, traumatic brain injury is very common. As you can see in this uh, graph from Dr. Jean, uh, it dwarfs all other types of brain uh, diseases with over 2 million traumatic brain injury cases per year. Every 15 seconds, someone has a traumatic brain injury in the United States alone. Every five seconds, someone is permanently disabled by traumatic brain injury. And it's a leading cause of death and disability in younger patients. The estimated course, uh, cost, both personally and financially, is quite staggering. Over the last several years, actually, falls have overtaken uh, motor vehicle accidents as the most common cause of brain injury. Now, if we look at who gets brain injury over time, this is the age group uh, going by uh, decades, we can see there's a peak in our late teens and early 20s, and another peak as we get over age 65 or 75. The blue bars show that men are disproportionately represented in central nervous system trauma. It isn't exactly clear why this is, although there are some clues from uh, the literature about activities that men uh, act engage in versus uh, more sensible women, uh, but we'll leave that for another uh, discussion. Now, how can we classify traumatic brain injury? Certainly, there are many ways uh, that give us sort of a shorthand for communication, uh, also for research studies. The clinical severity using the Glasgow Coma Scale, imaging severity, timing, is this a primary injury at the time, or is it secondary as a complication? What's the mechanism of injury? and the location, of course. And we'll be touching on all of these uh, since they're used usually in combination to understand. Now, one of the most uh, important clinical scales is the Glasgow Coma Scale. This scale goes from three, which is essentially no function on eyes, verbal, or motor, up to a normal scale of 15 uh, for a perfectly normal patient. As you can imagine, as you take points off, we get lower Glasgow coma scales, and these correlate at least roughly with categories of injury. So 13 to 15 would be mild, 9 to 12, moderate, and 3 to 8, a severe injury based on this clinical grading scale, which is simple and reproducible. There are other ways to look at it, uh, the post-traumatic amnesia time, the le length of uh, uh, consciousness disturbance, et cetera. But the GCS is the one I think most of us use. Now, if we are to approach the injury, uh, we have to have a pattern like any other uh, type of film uh, or examination. And I think uh, the one that makes the most sense, uh, most experts, including Professor Parazel, I've heard him speak on this, start with the outside and go in. And this is how Elisa Jean also looks at it. And one of the keys here is just to dust off some of our neuroanatomy, and in particularly the anatomy of the meninges, which are critical for understanding the patterns of blood. So you'll remember, of course, that the pia mater, the delicate part of the brain, covers the surface of the brain. It's a thin single cell layer. The arachnoid, arachnoid comes from spider. It looks like spider web here with these little trabeculations. That's where the CSF and the blood vessels run. The dura, dura mater, the tough mother, this uh, tough co coating, which is the inner periosteum of the skull, splits off uh, around dural reflections like the falcs and, uh, say, at the optic nerve. And then we, using that information, can classify why different blood collections occur where they do. For example, with trauma to the scalp, we may see scalp...